Yeah. Hello everyone, thanks for being here. I'm so glad to enlighten you with our presentation, especially you, dear sir, and our most respectable judge panel and my fellow friends. As the team leader, actually today I feel so blessed. Do you know why? Just think about a river. It's more beautiful not with some flowing water, but with massive divers of gems and crystal. Being in the most luckiest group ever, I had a more cooler yet fantastic experience with my group members as I found out our flow more beautiful than a river. So let me introduce myself. I'm Ashwadhara Vijayatunga and I'm so delighted to introduce my team which is nicely combined with 2021, 2022 and 2023 batches. Then welcome Amisha Shonali, Natmini Hansika, Binguni Nimnadi, Avindya Kalpani and Samadhi Sudsingha. Yeah, so I promise at the end you will be able to find out more interesting and informative facts about Kamala Markandya's next in a sieve. Now, we are going to discuss 10 different but interconnected aspects of the novel Nectar in a Sieve by Kamala Markandeya based on Barry Agal's point of view. First of all, I would like to introduce who is Barry Agal. He was born in England, studied at the University of Adelaide in Australia, completed studies at Leeds, then he works as a teacher at York University in Toronto 1969, as well as he was a great painter and an English professor. I would like to expose a notion about the novel Nectar in a Seal through the eyes of Barry Agai. According to him, the novel is a piece of great art which is an evidence to white man's exploitation against non-whites, the industrial capitalism. To add to this, he mentions this matter as an art of life in the unfamiliar world of Indian village as a novel nourishes with the theme of change. Now, the floor is yours, Samadhi. Thank you, Yashodaraka. Now, before I start, does anyone know that human brain has an average of 70, 70, 50,000 to 70,000 thoughts a day? Hey, you heard me right. An estimate 60% to 70% of those ideas are negative. And that's the thought of the day. So without further ado, let me present Barry Agar's theories on moral intelligence and sensibility. Kamala Markandas Nectar in a Sieve novel, the reflective of moral intelligence of uh, awakened feminine sensibility. Moral intelligence controls sensibility. In Markandar's work, moral intelligence of women mainly articulate through the characters of Rukmani. And also we can take the characters of Kunti and Ira. If we talk about Kunti's character first, Kunti uses her knowledge to exercise an evil power. Once Nathan and Rukmani share the truth with each other, Kunti's power over them is broken. And then we come to Ira's character. Ira is the daughter of Rukmani who chooses degradation of prostitution over the degradation of starvation. And finally, let's come, let's move into the heroine of our, little heroine of our story, Rukmani's character. She nearly becomes a murderer thinking that Kunti has to steal the last portion of their rice. Her sons re repudiate their caste. Her daughter redefines dishonor. Her grandson, Sakrabani, crosses the uh, barrier of skin color. Yet, Rukmani becomes, gets more stronger because of her devotion to truth. And the same, she exhibits him the belief that transcends all the moral values. Kamala Markanda's nectar in a sieve distracted a reader's attention from its organization as a novel. The sensibility which informs it and the moral intelligence which controls that sensibility. So thank you so much for your patience and attention. Up next is Avindya. Avindya. Thank you, Samadhi. When we consider the industrial capitalism, the industrial capitalism marked the development of the factory system of manufacturing characterized by complex division of labor between and within work process and routine of work tasks. Industrial capitalism being Western in its origin is white, thus according to Barry Agile, the novel is about the white man's exploitation of non-white. 
This exploitation intrudes to the village of Rukmani in a form of a tannery. So the novel serves its function as an evidence of a coming revolution. In this new turn of industrial revolution, industrialists replace merchants as key players in the capitalist system. This new way of doing business came at an expense of wages, working conditions, leading workers to organize unions and advocate political solutions to economic problems. Moreover, from 16th to 18th century in England, the industrialization in mass enterprises such as cloth industry gave rise to a system in which the accumulated capital was invested to increase the productivity. And that system is called capitalism. The next chance is yours, Nathmini. Thank you, Vavindya. A symbol of modernity, the tannery helped to deal with the dire poverty and also represents the possibility of family land which subtly degrades the importance of the family. It transforms not only the relationship between people, but also transforms the village environment and economically. And also the attitude of villagers about the tannery, Rupani is filled as it set to village, uh, but for Arjun and Tambi, it is a good job opportunity as they ignore the family tradition. Uh, so it appears how the tannery acts as a social role and also an economic role throughout the novel. So next chance goes for Avindya to continue. Uh, fatalism or the silent submissiveness. Fatalism, determinism, and the calm acceptance can clearly be seen in Nectar in a Sieve in the life of the central character. Northern and Rukmani, being rural villagers, aren't radical and they silently suffer what life inflicts upon them. Similarly, they do not grumble, do not complain, but accept silently. According to Barry's review, the commonplace, what is done, is done, or say la vie, augurs a facile fatalism or the easy acceptance of the kind. The novelist Kamala Markandya, having the chance to travel broadly in India and the chance to observe the lives of rural Indians in close quarters, has also studied the fatalism and the passive acceptance of the given lot. The Indian peasant work and leave everything in the hands of God and bear all the suffering silently in a sense of fatalism and submissiveness. Nekmini? And also when we talk about plausibility, the novel is in first person narration and depends on characterization. When the narrator's point of view is uncreated by anyone, it is a change of prejudice. Uh, in conclusion, I can say that success of these types of novels depends on plausibility. Uh, so next chance goes for Bikuni Nangi to continue. Thank you, Akka. According to Barry Agai, time is indicated in an unfactual way. The very first each sentence of first 18 chapters refers to time. It means days, nights, years, seasons, and festivals while the opening sentences of all the other chapters depicts moment in time. This helps to show an effective summary and it confirms, in the, it confirms at the end of the novel. Tanri is also given us a crystal clear idea about the time. It's the early era of post-colonization. Now let's focus on social changes. The more violent the season, faster comes social changes as adaptation. The tannery easily and ruthlessly wins the rural farmers as they face lack of options. So the peasant farmers are forced to abandon their paddy field for their bread and butter. So Amishakka, now it's your chance. And now let's focus on these kingdoms, the woman and the home. Here, according to the Bayaga's point of view, the novel concerns the role of hope in the face of suffering, the title left in a sieve and the epigraph, work without hope draws left in a sieve and hope without an object cannot live, seem to imply that the author regards hope as a necessary to the life. And according to the novel, for a woman, life is always a challenge. And since ages, she has been subject to the many challenges thrown by the society, customs, traditions, and men. And also, traditionally, procreation was so important that if a bride failed to uh, conceive her husband there and the wife, and the birth of a daughter was considered as a liability. And overall, Rukmini is reluctant to depart from her traditional female docility, and she's a different person than other characters in the novel, and independence in 
her her independence is laudable and she faces and deals with the challenges and obstacles that she met and kunti is a woman who is dangerous and immoral as a village beauty and also collapses up ira's marriage shows that how women are undervalued and mistreated rukmini's maternal tenderness and unconditional acceptance further the grief of the deaths of rukmini's children um, didn't affect her so strongly that she moves with hope and through the hardships and in spite of hardships the family exhibited love contentment but luckily or unluckily this hope never became a reality thank you thank you so much now yashoda yes thank you amisha so this is not the end it is not even the beginning of the end but it is perhaps the end of the beginning finally i would like to send my heartiest respect to our respectable judge panel our dear sir mr indunil vanmuk korala our parents and friends as well as all of my hard working group members working together sharing caring new but friendly group that succeed start with flower still all step smiling hard but tired not outcome refreshing because of you dear toy lover flourishing thank you always for words motivating right in now is here with nectar you pouring crown for you sir for hope us crowning yeah thank you so much for taking time to attend our presentation